somebody like me. Hello there everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is involved with swapping out an Xbox Series X HDMI port. The Series X is of course Microsoft's current flagship console and this one is feeling a little under the weather because the HDMI port looks to have taken a little knock. The outer shield's been splayed open and the central comb has snapped at the end, leaving the pins pretty mangled. This is typical what I like to call dusting damage, where the console gets shifted towards the back of a TV cabinet whilst cleaning and it gets a bit of a whack with a HDMI cable plugged in. So not the end of the world then, and something we can easily sort out. So let's get to it. A quick disclaimer before we do though. You'll know previously that I've made plenty of tutorials on how to replace HDMI ports on all sorts of consoles, most of which are available on my old channel. I'm all for anyone giving things like this a go, and I'll happily give you the knowledge to do so, but on this occasion I really wouldn't recommend this particular job for a novice. These Series X boards are by far and away the hardest console I think you can change a HDMI port on. The boards are super thick and have many layers which make them up. Consequently, they sink heat away very efficiently, so getting these boards up to temperature for a good, clean extraction can be tricky, even for an experienced tech with the right kit. For someone who's not familiar with this work or the processes involved, it's a one-way ticket to the shop for a new console, or at best, a big bill for a PCB repair. You've been warned. Okay, and with that said, let's start. Aside from a new HDMI port and a soldering iron, you'll need the following. A hot air station. A quality one, mind. Reliable temperature control and regulation is a must here. Leaded solder. A 60-40 tin lead mix is ideal. Some people may benefit from some low melt solder, also known as Chickwick. This stuff melts at super low temperatures and will help get the ports out much easier. Now I haven't got any of that here today, so we'll be using a bit of leaded solder to achieve a somewhat similar effect. A quality solder flux. I use Amtec NC559 V2TF. This stuff is brilliant, just make sure you stick to the official resellers as there is tons of fake stuff flying around which is absolute garbage. A pair of grips or tweezers and scissors. Desolder braid, desolder pump or a gun. A combination of the above would be absolutely ideal. Some heatproof aluminium tape or Kapton, whichever you prefer or have better access to. Finally, we'll be needing some isopropyl alcohol for cleaning the PCB and some Q-tips or cotton buds for the same. Now we've got our Series X disassembled and the motherboard is out on the desk. If you want to see how that's done, I'd recommend taking a look at iFixit's service manual for the Series X. A link for that is in the description for your perusal. The first thing I like to do is get the board taped up and protected. We're going to be chucking some serious heat into this thing and there are some very sensitive components close by which we really don't want to disturb. I'm thinking mainly of this, the ESD booster IC. This chip is, at best, very difficult and expensive to get a hold of. There are some fixed boards available for replacement of a faulty IC, which are brilliant by the way, but we don't want to be damaging, knocking or cooking this IC if we can at all avoid it. Get that roll of heat proof tape out and cut a couple of lengths to cover the booster IC region. Apply a couple of layers and make sure it's stuck down properly. Next we'll apply a couple of layers to the bottom of the storage expansion slot. The bottom edge of this connector is exposed plastic and is very close to the HDMI port, so to stop any damage inadvertently occurring, pop a couple of layers over this slot. So this now looks good and we've made sure to leave the area beneath the HDMI port, especially those ground locating pins, exposed. Next we'll apply some flux to the port locating pins and apply a generous amount of leaded solder onto them. Hesitate the heat over the pins and feed in the solder. This will dilute down the lead free solder in the holes with the leaded, which will help to lower the melting point of the original solder. If you've some low melt solder, this would be ideal time to use it. But if not, then leaded will do. Getting that solder down into the holes can be tricky, so make sure you hold that heat onto those pins to get the job done. Next, apply some flux to the rear of the HDMI port over the signal pins. You can be fairly generous with it, it'll all clean up in the end. I remove these ports in two stages. Hang the board over the edge of the table with the HDMI port the right side up. Firstly, I heat up the underside of the board, so from below, with no nozzle on the heat gun to get plenty of nice, even heat into the board. 408 degrees C airflow with 100 litres of airflow per minute is what I like to go for here. This will heat up the board area around the HDMI port, which you'll need. Trust me. I'm going to hold the wand a couple of centimetres away from the board as per this picture and keep the air circulating around the area for a couple of minutes. You're looking for the solder in the locating holes to start going shiny on the top side of the board, but once you can see that happening, I put the nozzle onto the air wand, crank the airflow up to 115 litres of airflow per minute and work the heat top side, now making sure to get plenty of heat into the locating legs and the HDMI pins themselves. 
put a pair of tweezers or grips into the opening of the HDMI port and get a firm grip. You're not applying any lifting force on this port whatsoever. The tension in a firm grip on your tweezers or pliers will be enough to shift the port when it's ready to move. You will see and feel it twitch, at which point you can then lift the port free, gently mined from the board. If you've done it correctly then you'll get a nice clean extraction every single time with no pulled pins or damaged traces. We've won the battle but not the war at this stage. You're best getting the board prepped for the new port while it's still got plenty of heat absorbed so you'll want to work fairly swiftly here. Apply some more flux to the HDMI signal pins and use the desolder braid and a nice clean beefy soldering iron tip to clean away the old lead free solder. When doing this you're not looking to apply any downwards pressure onto the pin header, you're not scraping it as that may damage your solder mask or ripper pad. You're just gliding the wick very gently over the pool of flux and allowing the heat of the iron to pull the solder up into the wick. A big tip here as well, these Series X boards have quite delicate HDMI pin headers for the HDMI port and I'm reliably informed that they're easy to lift pads on if you're not careful. Don't be tempted to work the wick side to side across the header, instead go the length of the pins back to front, doing a couple at a time with the wick and overlapping your strokes with the iron. This will help ensure your pads stay attached to the board where nature intended them to be. Once that's clean the next job is to clear the port locating holes of any old solder. We'll be wanting to locate the new port into the board before we do any soldering so this is a vitally important step. If you've a desoldering pump or gun this might be a bit easier than how I'm having to do it because I haven't got these to hand. I'm going to show you how to clean these holes effectively using nothing but desolder braid, flux and your heat gun. The best thing is you can employ this technique to pretty much any console board and port you like. It's quick and fairly easy once you've got the knack. First apply plenty of flux and add some leaded solder to the locating holes as we did earlier before removing the old port. Clean away what you can with the wick, but chances are you're still going to have some solder in these holes. Get some scissors and cut a slant across the edge of your braid. It effectively forms a wedge shape in the end of the braid. Make sure the very end is just about small enough to enter the locating hole on the PCB. Don't cut the end too small though, just about small enough to get into the hole is all you need. Next add flux and get heating with your heat gun, focusing the heat onto the hole that you're clearing. There should still be some residual heat in the board making this slightly easier. After a few seconds offer up the braid to the hole. Once the solder starts to melt the braid will drop into the hole. The heat and flux will encourage the solder to absorb into your braid. Work the braid up and down steadily for a few seconds and remove the braid. You may need to repeat this a couple of times per hole depending on how much solder is stuck in there. If your braid is saturated with solder, trim the end, recut your wedge and go again. As you can see here, we've got that hole beautifully clear in double quick time. Nice and easy. Now might be a good time to have a bit of a clean up of that old flux. We want our board fairly clean of any old residual material before we get to installing our new port. Get out the isopropyl alcohol and your favourite cleaning utensils, cotton swabs etc and get scrubbing. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, you just want the old burn flux out of the way before we get to soldering the new port. Be mindful of those tiny surface mount components, they're dotted all over this board and will be fairly easily damaged or knocked off if you get too excitable with your cleaning action. Once clean, apply new flux to the HDMI signal pin header and ball up some solder onto a clean soldering iron tip. Run the ball of solder over the pads to load them up with a nice amount of solder. Make a couple of passes if required to get each pad a nice uniform amount of solder applied. If you've made a mess feel free to clean up some more and reapply clean flux. Once you're happy, grab that new HDMI port and push it into position. Check the pin pad alignment is good, if not you may need to clean out those locating holes a little bit more. The alignment of these replacement series exports is actually pretty good, there's no adjustments or anything necessary, or at least there shouldn't be. Once you're happy, ensure you have a healthy amount of flux applied and get the heat gun back out. I use 480 degrees Celsius at 100 litres per minute of airflow for this. Using gentle but firm pressure, push the rear of the port down towards the PCB with a pair of tweezers or grips. Work the heat around the rear of the port from around an inch away, not hesitating too long in a single place. Do this for around 30 seconds or so until you start to see and feel the solder go shiny and the pins sit nicely into the solder on the pads. The port itself should be sat nice and flat and you shouldn't see any solder bridging. Once you're happy the port is seated and solder is flowed, remove the heat but maintain pressure on the rear of the new port. Hold this here for 30 seconds or so. This will allow the solder to cool and the joints to set nicely. Your port should now be soldered into place. You shouldn't be able to move it. Get a bit of isopropyl alcohol and clean the newly soldered pins of any residual flux or solder. 
Before we solder the locating pins, we'll check our signal pins are all properly soldered. Any tweaks required here will be easier without those locating pins soldered, so grab yourself a pair of tweezers and prepare to carry out the nudge test. All we do here is go across from pins 1 to 19, giving each pin a firm but gentle nudge sideways. If the pin is properly soldered, we shouldn't see or feel any movement in the pin. As we can see here, ours are all perfectly soldered. We've given all pins 1 to 19 a quick prod sideways and there is no movement to be had whatsoever. Perfect. And just look at those pins. Each one beautifully filleted with a perfect uniform appearance to each pin. That port looks just like it rolled off the production line. If you find yourself with a couple of pins not soldered correctly, apply flux and touch the affected pins with your soldering iron to get them into position. If there are a good number of loose pins, reapply flux and reperform your heat gun pass, putting firm but gentle pressure onto the rear of that HDMI port. Once you're happy all is well, it's time to solder those ground locating pins. Apply a healthy amount of flux to each pin and tin the tip of your soldering iron. The beefy tip here is very useful. Touch the tip to the edge of the hole and feed in the solder from the other side. Hesitate the heat from the iron for a few seconds which will encourage heat to flow down into the large hole and carry the solder with it. If you've done it well you should see solder at the entrance of the hole on the opposite side of the PCB. If not, repeat the process until you do. Once you have that done, flip the board back over to the underside and just finish off the joint. You don't want large blobs of solder under here which might make port alignment awkward when you come to reassemble. A nice fillet should be what you're aiming for, with locating holes nicely filled, like these. Once that's done, it's just a case of cleaning up any old spent flux and solder residue with your isopropyl alcohol and getting that board nice and clean. Whilst you're inside your console this far, you might as well give it a good clean out of dust, paying close attention to that big heatsink radiator, and renewing the thermal paste. The Series X uses a conventional thermal compound unlike the PS5, which uses a liquid metal, so changing it out here is much easier than on its Sony counterpart. All that's left to do now is reassemble and test. I like the way the Series X comes apart and goes back together. Everything can be done with a T8 Torx screwdriver and a nice SMO opening tool. Other spudges are of course available. For the uninitiated it seems a bit odd with its rubber straps, interconnected boards and everything seemingly just wedged in there, but when you come to it, it all just makes a lot of very simple sense. Well done Microsoft. And well done to you too if you've gotten this far. Many thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow and lets me know that I'm at least doing something right. And on the subject of doing things right, it looks like we've done this repair right too. The system starts up fine and our capture card gets a lovely clean signal from our Xbox. What a result. So all that's left to do is say thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this one and if you have then please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see further videos on more console repairs and don't forget to ding that notification bell to be notified when they do come out. As always if you have any questions feel free to pop them below and if you have any comments drop those down there too. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you'd like to support the channel, then please pop along to my Patreon or Ko-fi pages, the links are in the description below. Again, many thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time for more right here on AP's Console Workshop. Goodbye for now.